Your fucking little T-Rex arms, man. My dick's longer than your fucking arms. 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 Bro, when you look at Tank's defense for people that had more, and I said it in my video, he said his dick was longer than Tank, bro. Tank's arm. This dick was longer than Tank, bro. Tank's arm. This dick was longer than Tank, bro. Tank's arm. Yo, you are so <laughs> soft. I don't, I don't understand why you do what you do. And he act like, bro. I don't know where his mind is at. This is on. This is some shit that's gonna be here forever, bro. Why would you say that? Why would you say that? Like for real. All right, welcome everybody to another one of my videos. We're going to be talking about boxing and some other stuff as well. I might even talk about basketball. Now, uh, disclaimer, full transparency, and in no way, shape, or form knowledgeable about basketball, but it has piqued my interest of late. And I think that basketball is going to continue to rise in popularity despite how popular it is at the moment. I think 2021, is going to the beginning of a resurgence, if not a revival, of basketball as a sport. And we can see that it has its own problems. Very distinct from what you have with boxing, but nevertheless, very big problems. As a matter of fact, you can compare basketball. You could actually um, suggest that the adage, maybe it's a modern adage, appears to be rather axiomatic when it comes to basketball like more money more problems I think they get more money in basketball on the whole in terms of the players compared to boxing there are a few people who make significant amount of money in boxing okay hence people like Jake Paul can come in and take advantage of it but if you can't play basketball you're not gonna make that kind of money but with that kind of money comes a great deal of responsibility as you find with people like Ben Simmons LeBron James, as a matter of fact, who I'll touch upon. If I choose to talk about it, I will, as a matter of fact. Sorry. I hate that. Um, LeBron James. Uh, and of course, to be honest, I'd rather stay, stay clear of the guy from the Nets. Okay, I'd rather, I'd rather stay clear of Kyrie Irving. Because um, it's controversial. I have a particular point of view and it's not going to be popular with the people who support Kerry Irving so I'd rather not touch upon him as such but we can talk about the Lakers we can talk about Stephen Curry and the 45 points that he scored you know what I mean Steph Curry was also being criticized going into this particular season because of what happened with his dad and mom and all that kind of stuff and people used it to judge him but on the uh, on the court he is one unique special talent that has changed as you know as described by people like Shaquille O'Neal the nature of the importance of the little man as opposed to the big man on the court so I'm, I'm discovering all these things I'm listening to all these channels that deal with basketball specifically that I probably wouldn't listen to and I'm gonna touch upon them too because they are very critical and very harsh in their judgment of these players and you find that no place is safe, particularly when you have the black American fan. And I'm not suggesting that they are wrong. It's just that the tone and the language is even more ramped up, but not as bad as boxing because boxing tends to also involve the element of race. And that makes it even a more, even though it's a smaller, it appeals to a smaller audience. It's still as toxic as it can get. It's very potent. It's a very potent drug. But when it comes to basketball, you find that majority of the players are black. And the commentators, a lot of them also very successful, happen to be black. A few of them white. When it comes to basketball, I don't think they're that critical of the players as such. They are. But you find that the players, when it comes to basketball, the ex-players, like Shaquille O'Neal, like Charles Barkley and stuff, when Charles Barkley's not getting involved in, 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 in politics, and whether you like it or not, whether you like it or not, and I'm going to say something very unpopular here, Stephen A. Smith knows basketball. His opinion might not necessarily be popular, 
okay? And people would rather listen to Kwame Brown. <laughs> it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Because, hey, at least Kwame Brown played, even though he's sort of capitalized on the fact that he was a boss at what they describe as a boss, not me. Let me just say that again, not me. He's what they describe as a boss in the NBA. He's decided to capitalize it on that based upon some drama that he had with people who are actually running a very successful show. Part of my learning process, learning about basketball has been listening to those guys on All The Smoke and going into the history of Steven Jackson. What happened uh, when he was with Reggie Miller and Meta World Peace. What happened? Why they, you know, what happened? Was it in Philadelphia? All those things, of course, going into the history of it, looking at the history. Aside from that, before we go into the box and we talk about Rolly Romero, we shall talk about him. I'll also be doing some book reviews. I've got some books here. I'm probably going to, do, my next project is going to be this one here. As you can see, it's called Mrs. Poe. A lot of you guys are probably come on this channel are into books like that but you know what man I need to diversify and you know and, and express my interest so I've got some books on my challenge here as you can see you got the Turner Diaries that I've already done which I should do a review on because I want to combine the Turner Diaries with the uh, other book that was written by the racist ass dude called Hunter so he wrote the Turner Diaries, which is regarded as a modern day Nazi Bible, as opposed to Mein Camp. The ideas that are uh, in the Turner Diaries are influenced by Mein Camp. The guy who wrote it, who calls himself Andrew McDonald, is actually William P. William something Purse, William L. Purse, or something like that. And he's an icon amongst neo Nazis and stuff and the people who go around yelling 1488. If you don't know what 1488 means, then you need to educate yourself in the literature, language, traditions, and conventions of white supremacy because you need to know your enemy. So, but going back to a more pleasant type of literature, and I'm not sure whether it's fi fact or fiction because I haven't actually read anything of it. We're going to uh, be looking at this book here the states are following it says a writer and his demons a woman and her desire a wife and her revenge that's what's written on the back there and states the following a compelling tale of ill-fated love rich with period and detail and suspense sorry forgive me it says a compelling tale of ill-fated love rich with period detail and suspense jennifer what's her name Chiaverini, Chiaverini, Jennifer Chiaverini, New York Times best-selling author of Mrs. Lincoln's Rival. So she's written this type of book as well. It says the following, it says, the triumphant success of Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. I'm not sure whether you guys know about The Raven, but you know, there's also a movie called The Raven, by the way, in case you want to know about it, but it has very little to do with the poem that Edgar Allan Poe, that dark poem that Edgar Allan Poe wrote. And that's actually quite apropos that I should select this book because uh, Halloween's, you know, on the, uh, on the horizon, isn't it? So he says, the raven compelling, sorry, the raven compels fledgling poet Francis Osgood to meet her literary idol, a mysterious complicated man who soon has her under his seductive spell in an all-consuming affair. And when Edgar's frail young wife breaks into their ideal to befriend her rival, Francis fears that deceiving Mrs. Poe may be as impossible as cheating death itself. Da, da, da. So anyway, we got that. We're going to be reading that. And we're going to be reading all sorts of books when it comes. But obviously, I'm not, I'm not a quick reader. I just like to read I, I hate to feel that it's a chore all right well now let's talk about boxing We've spent 10 minutes talking about things to do with basketball etc etc so let's start off let's go on to uh yeah on um on instagram the first thing i'm presented with is something to do with chantel 
That's Chantal Cameron against whoever she's fighting. Chantal Cameron and Mary McGee. So Chantal Cameron and Mary McGee. That's them there. All right. They got a fight, and people aren't too. Uh, they're not too excited, enthusiastic, I should say, about about um, Matchroom's next card. You got the whole thing with Canelo and Kelly Plant coming up soon. Speaking of Kelly, speaking of Canelo, you've all seen his genetically modified abs, haven't you? You've seen those. You know what I mean? A lot of uh, Bud Crawford. A lot of stuff with Bud Crawford as well. Going up there. But, you know. There's not much to do with Roly on Instagram because I don't follow Roly. But on Twitter. On Twitter, there's more to do with Roly. Oh, this has got the whole thing with Tyson Fury and Dylan White. I'm not going to get into that unless it, chooses, unless, unless it happens, you see. If it happens, then fine. But at the moment it says, hell yeah. This is just people from the zone speaking about it. They have their opinion. They're entitled to their opinion just like anybody else. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Right now, right now, I'm going to go into some of the stuff that I've saved aside, that I've put aside. So we can look at this really situation, man. We can look at this really situation. Alright. So this is a lady that has launched that started it all. If I'm not mistaken, her name is uh, Isabel, it's spelled somehow, Isabel Zambrano. Isabel Zambrano. That's her again. Okay. Okay. All right, so this is her. This is what she wrote. She, guess you can read it, okay? It says, Five people, including me, we all have the same exact story and didn't know until I came forward. This is your friend. This is the real Rolando Roli Romero. Now, what happened was she said she hated seeing this sexual, uh, what she call him? She didn't call him offender, assaulter, sexual assaulter, all over the place, and that's what started it. And then later, I think some other people started coming forward, and uh, you know, people have uh, started to think like, well, it might affect the fight. Now, here's the thing: what I've noticed about boxing fans is that they're more concerned about the fight getting cancelled than the story that the lady, um, who's obviously traumatised and decided to keep receipts that she's making. Jake Donovan, on the other hand, he's uh, you know he's at least acknowledging that there might be a situation that needs to be dealt with. So that's Jake Donovan. This is what he's written. He says, disturbing development involving Rolando Romero, allegations of sexual assault from at least eight alleged victims at current count. It runs far better than ridicule and toxicity that has so far come of Isabel's outcry. So that's the position that Jake Idek is taking. Um, and this is some of the stuff that was sent during the exchanges that she's been having with other women in regards to Rolando Romero. And this is, let, let me just take a few samples. This one here, we're gonna put, I'm gonna put it up so you can see it better. This person states the following. She says, he came to see me. Okay, let me, let me look at it properly. He says, he came to see me and we went to the store together and then I went to work afterwards. But I got off, but when I got off, I guess he waited for me. <laughs> and then we went into his car. We were kissing and I was okay with that, but it was late and I wanted to go home. And I said, maybe another time we could do more. But he pulled his dick out and put my hand on it. He wanted to have sex then and there in the parking lot. And I didn't want to. Told him no many times, no means no, Rolly. 
told him no many times but he was very persistent and put my hand on his dick multiple times eventually he gave up and I got out of his car he expected me to give in but that's just something I wasn't going to do if there's other women I encourage them to come out as well as well because I'm sure we weren't the first or last sadly so that's one story this is another story it says after we were done hanging out I thought I was I thought he was taking me home but he wanted to make a quick stop we hung out there for a while and then started to be a bit pushy then started to be a bit pushy in a sexual way and for some reason it just wasn't sitting right with me he started to touch my body and he pulled out his penis this guy loves pulling out his penis he pulls out more than Ryan Garcia anyway <laughs> he loves pulling out his dick doesn't he he must be very proud of that little Cuban thing anyway and says like and told me to give him a blowjob I repeatedly kept saying no while he stopped there he, while he stood there he stood there with his penis <laughs> do you know what okay I'll, I'll say something in a minute he stood there with his penis out he then embossed my pants put his hands down put them sorry put his hands put his hands them down okay she's written this wrong put his hands down then while he kissed me all over and made me hold his dick I felt frozen all I remember was doing what he asked me to do and hearing him say I always get what I want so just just always just guess what I want just so I can go home I always get what I want just so I can go home and then there's some exchanges between the lady uh, what's her name Isabel Zamrano Zamrano I believe and uh, some of the other ladies there as you can see oh this is one I should read it says please keep me anonymous please keep me anonymous but he did something similar to me he invited me over to his apartment to hang out after we hung out and got food he tried to force me to go down on him and I was scared because I had no ride home or knew the area of his apartment he forcefully kissed me and I felt like I had to do it so he could drop me back off at home and not hurt me hand job not blow job I was going through your tweets and you and you when said and when you said that he wanted that he wanted you to twerk so he could beat his dick made my heart sink to my stomach because he had said the very similar words to me on multiple occasions while holding my pictures against me and thinking about it makes me want to throw up so basically he's more or less got nudes of ladies and he's using it to blackmail ladies uh, throw up so dig it up Roly is literally a piece of shit and definitely needs to be exposed I was so scared when he threatened to release my own nudes because I, it says nude my own nude but I, I'm, my own nude because I didn't want to go hang out with him because I had got a bad feeling and chickened out last minute from one of his fights you and every one of the other girls that he has sexually assaulted are so strong and I thank you for coming forward to help girls like me also come forward now this person here writes this is Pat Healy he says I think Steven Espinosa needs to be tagged in this okay uh, he's not one to take this sort of thing lightly it will really concern him if there's truth to this and then Isabel Zamrano replies I don't know anything about the boxing world so I don't know who this guy is but the thread is here for him to see and then Lou DiBella Lou DiBella gets involved and Lou DiBella states the following no it's weird no it's not weird it's actually typical of people who suffer sexual intimidation and abuse that's why people are asking well, well why didn't you go to the police then you know the usual stuff that men do when this kind of thing happens all right they're afraid not only of the asshole abuser but also of being victimized humiliated and judged this is particularly true when the abuser has a fan base now the truth of the matter is I believe the woman 
in, and you might say on based upon what I say based upon experience not my experience but what I've known and grown up around what I know about guys what I've seen from England to Africa to stories to people that I know I know how people behave you know what I mean to people to rappers boasting about running trains on women and so on and so forth okay to people who just can't take no for an answer for actually being once being indoctrinated not to take indoctrinated not to take no for an answer because you know when they meet when they say no they mean yay the whole the whole uh, way we've been brought up and that that of course has been changed around and it's very confusing of course because there are a lot of women who are groupies who want a person like Donald Trump to grab them by the pussy you see Donald Trump shouldn't have said it, he shouldn't have did it, but let's keep it real. There's a lot of women who are bad women and want to be in the position of that girl who's being grabbed by the pussy. And I know I'm not encouraging it. I'm not saying you should do it. You know what I mean? But the landscape of women is very confusing. Okay? It's inconsistent. When women talk about sexual assault, yet will go by Fifty Shades of Grey at an alarming rate and make the movie a success. A movie that involves BDSM. I suppose there's consent there, so that makes it okay. But there was a level of power that the men held over the young girl that came to work for him. And that, of course, turned a lot of elder women that read and bought that book, so I bought and read that book on. I'm not saying this to defend this piece of shit called Rolo Romero. I think he's a piece of shit. I think he's done a lot of this nonsense. But the reason why I believe that he's done it is because there is a landscape out there that is very confusing for men like him. Okay. And if he has had success with it in the past, whether you're a football player, how many times have we heard these type of stories? A basketball player of groupies want to, of the cheerleaders want to fuck all the whole team and all this shit. You know what I'm saying? Then it becomes part of the the growing pains of being in an urban society, or even not even urban. It's even I think it's even worse in one of those rural towns. If you've ever seen. What's the name of that movie? No, it's a series, okay? You know what? I shouldn't even be referencing because I like to remember what I'm talking about before I get involved in it. But, you know, what's her name again? I can't remember, man. Uh, no, I can't remember. You know what I'm saying? There was a, there was a series on with... Uh, what's the name of that lady? Let, let me, let, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to find it for you. This is the way I know how to find things like this. So I type in Arrival, the movie Arrival from 2016. And what's the name of the actress there? Yeah, Amy, Amy Adams. So Amy Adams, and then we go Amy Adams TV series, Amy Adams. What was it called? What was it called? Yes, Sharp Objects. Sharp Objects, see? Didn't take too long. Sharp Objects. Troubled young lady. I don't, I'm not going to tell you what happened. It's a, it was a very good series, but underneath all that was the fact that while she was young, beautiful and popular, she was a cheerleader, and some of the guys who still lived in that town had ran a train on her. You know what I mean? So there was a mixture of guilt. On her side, on the side of the guys that had done it, are still, who were still in that town. Who still wanted to somehow be her friend and realize that what they'd done at that time. And they all had families and children and stuff. And she'd gone off to another town and she'd become a journalist and they were in investigating a murder. But underneath that, even though he's not explicitly expressed. Okay. There is... There is this undercurrent, this undertow that suggests that part of the problems that she was facing was the fact that somebody, maybe she'd been raped as a matter of fact, and her mother, who you can see in the corner there in white, oh is that her? Yeah, their mother. 
I sort of ignored some of the trauma that that had caused her. Because her mother liked keeping up appearances in that small town they were in. And these young girls were, were, were being killed and their teeth were being knocked out. You need to watch it. And if you have watched it, you know what I'm talking about. So I kind of know. And I think Rolly was doing that shit. Rolly was pulling out his dick. Because I know guys that used to take girls home. I used to have a friend like that, actually. And the first thing he'd do was pop on a porn film. And it used to work, I suppose. I never did it. I always thought that that was a bit, you know, much. It's a bit like, you know, too much of a declaration. <laughs> but I suppose he says it worked. It could have been bullshitting. That's more or less the equivalent of putting out your dick and putting some girl's hand on it, isn't it? Really. But not necessarily the same, but, you know. Those of you who are worried about the boxing match, the boxing match is probably still going to happen because I, we understand that's more or less what you're more concerned about. It's going to happen. They're going to try and make sure that it happens. And of course, the people who defend, who are going to defend Romero can always point to Sega Kovalev. Well, what about Sega Kovalev? What about what he did? You know, they're going to do that. You see, this is what they do to a black man. So, you know, so I, I fear not. But in as much as me believing the women, I believe the women. I do. I think he was going around doing that. It might even be worse. You know, I don't think they've exaggerated. I think they've actually be conservative. I think he's done worse. I think Rolly Romero has done worse. You know what I'm saying? I think. You know what I'm saying? That he's done worse. Because I know those type of characters. Once they go down that road, we know what they do. And you, guys, you know people like that. You know what guys that have been around you have done. You've known about the girl that you laughed at when they said that they've run a train on her. I'll never forget there was a girl that they ran a train on. And I remember seeing her later and I felt kind of sorry for her. Because she didn't deserve it. And the reason why the guys that could do it in Africa could do it is because their fathers was rich and powerful. Not all of the guys, but the main house that she went to, because she liked one of those guys that she went to. And once you're in that situation, it comes down to what were you doing there? In fact, there was one time, and I've never been in those situations, but I heard about it, that the girl saw a guy that she respected walked into the room and she said, please, please help me. And the guy said, open up, bitch. That's a loose translation. That's what he said to her. We heard the stories. And I'm ashamed to say that I kind of sniggered. Because I kind of knew the kind of person that the guy was. That that's what he would do. And I do feel that these things are going to come around and hurt these people later in life. Maybe their daughters, maybe them, if they catch cancer or something like that. You never know what kind of fucking evil these motherfuckers have done to women. It is what it is, man. I think, uh, you know, so those of you who are gonna jump up and defend Rolly Romero, I understand. And you might have a problem with me saying this, but deep down in your heart, you know if you are a guy that you've seen it all before, so cut the bullshit. Your fucking little T-Rex arms, man, my dick's longer than your fucking arms.